All right, thanks, Emily. And uh, wow, what a, what a great session, that, that last session. Um, <clears throat> well, let's keep it moving. We've got some more good stuff coming up. And um, I'm really pleased uh, to be able to introduce uh, a long-term colleague, a dedicated conservationist, and a good friend, uh, Andrew John Rhodes Espinosa. Um, Andrew has more than 17 years of experience working for the conservation and sustainable use of the natural heritage of Mexico and Latin America. He is a very busy person, as you will see. Uh, he currently works as the ocean coordinator attached to the Under Secretariat for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights with the Ministry of Foreign Relations of Mexico. And he serves as Sue Sherpa for the High Level Panel for a Sustainable Ocean Economy. And in addition, he's the Deputy Chair of the World Commission on Protected Areas of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Prior to these positions, he's also held executive positions in the National Commission for Protected Natural Areas in Mexico, CONAM, as their national commissioner, which is essentially the head of the Mexican protected area system. He was also general director of institutional development and promotion and director of climate change strategies for the Mexican protected area system. Finally, he has served as general director for the Pro Natura system, which is a conservation or a series of conservation NGOs spread throughout uh, the country of Mexico, as well as the central coordinator of the Fund for Protected Areas in the Mexican Fund for the Conservation of Nature. Thank you so much for joining us, Andrew. Muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. And I will now pass you the mic. We look so much to hearing, uh, to hearing from you right now. Take care. Thank you, Ryan. It is uh, without any doubt an honor uh, to be here with you um, after several months of planning and discussing my participation. Um, so I'm gonna take advantage that I assume I have the control and uh, share my screen for you to see my presentation. Just give me a second. It should be there. Yep, okay. So please let me know if you can, if you can see my screen. Yes, looks good. Everything looks good, Andrew. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So uh, again, Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here with you. And um, this morning, uh, I was reviewing my, my, my slides and um, I decided to give a little shift from the original version that I was going to share with all of you um, and, and reflecting on a, a very lovely night sky that I had yesterday and, and, and the relevance of uh, watching stars and how you draw constellations to form different different figures in your mind and and interpret those figures into different let's say ideas uh, initiatives and, and sometimes projects. So bear with me. Um, I won't draw very far from the the main objective of the presentation, but I, I wanted to share this with you. Before doing that um, and, and and recognizing the context that we are in. Uh, I wanted to take a little time and talk about this concept of build back better. Three dots still waiting for it, you know? Um, we're still in a pandemic and the context and our reality hasn't really changed that much. And, 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 and just to give you an example of this, please let me uh, turn and read you a, a small paper that the World Resource Institute in 2020 wrote uh, during the pandemic and this concept of build back better. Still, we need to define what better means to all of us, but the, 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 this quote from Dolores Wright, it's really interesting. Um, it says, governments and others will spend trillions of dollars responding to the effects of the coronavirus, rebuilding the old fashioned way by investing in fusual, uh, uh, fossil fuel, driven growth that threatens human health and exacerbates inequality. It is a dangerous proposition. Future prosperity demands that countries build back better. It follows. 
To build back better, countries must harness low carbon investments, opportunities to reboot economies while reducing the greenhouse emissions and air pollution that jeopardize lives. It means pulling people out of poverty and creating more jobs. And it means forcing resilience to future shocks like disease outbreaks and the impacts of climate change, loss of biodiversity, all the global crises that we know. This, this quote comes from WRI, and, and it's, it looks like this sort of uh, extraordinary vision that they foresee or foresaw what is happening right now. No, we're still doing the same things. So look into the night sky and those stars there, it's important to look for those constellations and those initiatives that can really help us reimagine our future and take action. So today I'm gonna draw from that, let's say idea, three stars. And everybody can obviously look to the night sky and pull different stars and draw different uh, constellations. But today I'm gonna choose three, three, three ideas that I want to bring to you on the table, three initiatives to share some lessons learned related obviously to, obviously to tourism. One star will be obviously uh, one of my roles as deputy chair for uh, the World Commission on Protected Areas of uh, IUCN and what does the WCPA is, it's doing and its relation to tourism. A second star is another hat that I also have simultaneously as Sue Sherpa before the high level panel for sustainable economy and all the work that 17 countries, the US and Canada and Mexico included, uh, are doing on let's say coastal marine tourism in the global arena. And finally, a different star, uh, a star more related to international conventions. I know that the US is not part of the Convention on Biological Diversity, but still many of the targets and discussions that are happening in that convention are reflected on uh, US policies. For instance, uh, 30 by 30 uh, targets that I will discuss uh, globally where protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures are on the central uh, discussions of, of, of it. So IUCN, WCPA, uh, high level panel, ocean, oceans and, 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 and sustainable tourism, and then CBD and play with some of those lines that interconnect between them to form a very interesting constellation. So again, going from multilateral affairs to some uh, uh, very uh, uh, close by uh, 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 examples, uh, so please bear with me in this very uh, interesting and, as you can see, bright sky that we have before us. So just to start, and for those who are not aware of what WCPA and the IUCNS, uh, the mission of, uh, IUC, uh, of WCPA is to develop and provide scientific, scientific, technical and policy advice and advocate for global and national systems of marine, freshwater and terrestrial protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures known better as OECMs that result in successful outcomes for the conservation of biodiversity based on principles of sound design, good management, and equitable governance. So basically, WCPA is one of the six commissions that are part of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and we are focused on developing uh, the best knowledge uh, uh, possible to help uh, 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 attain this mission that I just uh, read to you out loud. WCPA uh, obviously focuses in, in, in different uh, uh, activities uh, from uh, regional and international congresses. This year we held the uh, Asia, Asia Parks Congress, the African Park Congress. Um, IUCN has developed uh, throughout time, very interesting emotions that after a, a system uh, uh, of, of voting, they become resolutions. Just to give you an example, but the World Heritage Convention was one resolution that came out from IUCN. So you can imagine the, 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 the importance and the relevance of those resolutions becoming policy uh, globally, but in some case, uh, uh, and it has local or national uh, national impact. And WCPA obviously is related to some of these resolutions that come from the IUCN. Obviously, the importance of cross uh, and, and collaborating with other commissions of IUCN, like the legal one or, 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 or 
or communications or species survival, um, um, climate change, among others. So how WCPA interacts with, with, with other commissions globally and obviously in different regions of the, of the planet. I'll, I'll show you some of the priority areas that WCPA will be working on the uh, following three, three, three or four years and how the structure of WCPA works in terms of uh, different groups, uh, task forces, on different uh, themes that help us obviously advance in <clears throat> the mission that I showed you before. In that sense, the, the, the seven priority areas that WCPA will be focusing on the next three years is one, obviously this uh, new um, proposed target, uh, target three of the Convention of Biological Diversity that relates to the famous 30 by 30 discussion that is happening globally. Uh, for, for those who are not aware of this target, uh, the, the idea is to protect 30% of the planet globally by 2030, therefore 30 by 30, um, through obviously protected areas in the different management categories that there, ex there exist and different types of governance and including OECMs, which is, which is a, a very interesting uh, conversation and discussion globally that we can get into uh, further along in this presentation. The second element is it's not only quantity. We also need to look at the quality element of those protected areas and OECMs. So uh, effectiveness of area-based conservation is one of the elements that we'll be uh, working in the following years, building capacity for different standards among them the green list uh, standard. We need to professionalize our protected and conserved areas workforce. There was just a, a paper released in Nature. I don't know if you uh, are aware of it, but the, the paper states that uh, currently, if we were to expand, let's say, the protected and conserved areas towards this 30 by 30, we should have uh, around 3 million uh, people in this workforce. And this, this is a huge increase and, and, and need uh, uh, that currently we're very far from it. Um, obviously championing and supporting diverse and equitable governance in the different management categories and types of governance of, of, of PAs, building capacity for self sustainable financing of protected areas and OECMs, the marine protected areas and all the agenda and the high seas effectiveness of, 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 of those places, protected areas and conserved areas, in this element and nexus interface between biodiversity and climate, still they're not very well positioned in global regional discussions. So we need to also focus on the uh, potential expected and, uh, and observed impacts of climate change on protected areas or national parks uh, throughout the globe. And finally, without any doubt, the development of uh, young professionals into uh, this entire conversation and work and obviously contributing with uh, uh, all the guidelines and, and best practices that are developed through 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 the commission um, and, and obviously within uh, the, the commission as, as i mentioned before there are different specialist groups one of them focuses especially on tourism and protected areas, a specialist group led, uh, chaired by uh, Dr. Anna Spensley. Uh, you can get her uh, contact details from the webpage of, 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 of WCPA. And, they, uh, and this group has mainly three, obviously, uh, uh, priorities. Obviously, the conservation of biodiversity, the generation of knowledge of best practices, case studies, innovation. It is a very active group. And, and obviously, uh, it looks to, to build awareness and improve governance and equi equity uh, through uh, the lens of, 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 of the tourism, of tourism um, uh, um, aspects. WCPA has developed throughout time a very large uh, set of publication series that I invite everyone here to take a look upon them. Uh, not only best practice guidelines and technical series and notes, but a, a peer reviewed journal uh, called Parks that you can submit uh, uh, your articles for them to be published uh, continually. And, and I truly invite all of, all of you to, to promote articles related to tourism, obviously building back better, uh, and obviously PAs and OECMs. I think it is a great opportunity to showcase and highlight all the knowledge that is uh, around that. So WCPA is, uh, without any doubt, the largest network of experts related to protected areas 
and conserved areas uh, uh, on the planet. And it's a huge opportunity for you to, to be a member of WCPA. It's free of charge. You just go into the web page and you submit your application uh, for, for, for the membership. Um, and I, and I, 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 know I will gladly uh, uh, highlight many of the, of, of, of the elements of success that WCPA has, uh, has done throughout the years. But Due to, the, due to the restrictions of time, I won't get into it. So WCPA as a sort of network of knowledge of experts related to tourism, protected areas, conserved areas, and now the discussions of, of, of OECMs is, is, is one of those stars in the night sky that I told you about uh, in the beginning of my talk. So there's the experts, there's the knowledge, there's the, 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 the publications or, or on which we set all this, all the knowledge, trying obviously to influence uh, different policies. The second, the second uh, uh, star that I want to bring before, let's say, starting to wrap things up, it's the high level panel for sustainable ocean economy. And I, and I, I wanted to include this, not only uh, to, to the relevance that I'll speak to on, on tourism, but the relevance for North America, as you can see on screen. So the panel was, uh, it started at basically at the end of 2018 by invitation of the, the prime minister of Norway and the president of Palau. And they invited a set of uh, countries with, uh, as you can see on screen, very different characteristics on the ocean agenda. From small uh, 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 developing countries, uh, island countries, uh, developing countries in, in, the, in the south and the African con uh, continent to, to, to North America, developing countries in Europe. So the, the constellation of these countries it's, it's really and truly interesting. Just to give you a sort of, 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 of data that I, I, I find uh, impressive is that 50% of the entire coastline of the planet is within these 17 countries. Almost 50% of all the economic zones of the planet is also represented in these 17 countries. Uh, besides, obviously, the immense uh, influence on marine transport, um, uh, 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 fisheries, and obviously tourism. Uh, most of these countries have a very uh, important agenda on marine and coastal tourism and depend in some cases uh, like Fiji or Palau uh, on, on uh, an important uh, percentage of their uh, 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 internal GDP on, on, on tourism. Mexico is one of those, is one of those uh, uh, cases. So, so the panel, uh, when it started, the objective was to, we need to rethink our relationship with the oceans. We need to come up with a new narrative, a new agenda that can really see uh, opportunities and uh, probably transit to uh, uh, prosperity and, and well-being of the planet from the oceans, trying to move away from this uh, uh, logic of oceans as a victim, oceans full of plastics, uh, uh, acidification, climate change, over exploitation, fisheries, but seeing oceans as an opportunity, uh, changing the narrative and trying to seek what opportunities are from the oceans that we can help different agendas, the agendas of, of sustainable productions, agenda of effective protection of coastal marine um, ecosystems, agendas of prosperity, justice, equity, among others. So the panel decided to build this ocean agenda, but first uh, trying to gather the best knowledge, knowledge, knowledge possible to draw from these different uh, articles, blue, called uh, blue, pa blue Papers, the findings that could help us build the ocean agenda uh, for the ocean plan. After basically two years of, uh, of, of working on these different blue, uh, blue, 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 blue papers, identifying the main findings, building up an agenda, having formal consultations uh, between the members of, of, of the ocean panel, uh, obviously internal consultations among different ministries uh, to come up with, let's say, a set of priorities of, of, of this agenda. 
Uh, finally, uh, uh, around the end of 2020, the Transformations for a Sustainable Economy agenda was launched, and it's endorsed by the 17 heads of state of the countries that I uh, just uh, highlighted in the, in the last slide. And within the transformations for a sustainable ocean economy, there's a specific targets and outcomes related to coastal and ocean-based tourism, as you can see on screen. Uh, what I mean endorsed is that all countries submitted a letter from their president, prime minister, head of state, or wherever, in this case, uh, for the US President Joe Biden, for Mexico, President Lopez Obrador, a letter um, acknowledging and committing itself to implement the transformations for sustainable economy. Um, the vision of, of the ocean panel uh, tries to balance three very interesting elements. One, how can we uh, effectively protect the ocean while sustainable producing from it and uh, transiting into a just and equitable prosperity among nations? It also sets a headline, a commitment of, let's think about the 100%. 100% with, within our EE zones that we can uh, sustainably manage uh, through different uh, actions that are highlighted on the transformations document. So what is the role of marine coastal tourism to this 100%? How this new, or how this un industry contributes to the protection, production and prosperity of a given country. What is the role of tourism? How do we need to reimagine tourism in, in face of, 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 of this uh, uh, global commitment? I want to highlight that the High Level Panel for Sustainable Ocean Economy, it's not under the UN umbrella, the United Nations umbrella. It is a multilateral initiative that harmonizes and works along with a UN different commitments, but it's, let's say, a multilateral stand alone initiative. But still, it relates to, a, to, the, to, to the, the, the SDGs uh, and among many other commitments that are around there. So we think about the 100%. We don't think about 30% protection or 20% uh, production, we think about the 100%. And, and this vision uh, I want to share with you uh, and, and hopefully uh, have a, an interesting discussion. In this sense, one of the reports that was commissioned by the high level panel and Dr. Anne's, uh, 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 Dr. Anne from the TAPA specialist group of IUCN was one of the co-authors that you can see on screen, was what are the opportunities for uh, transforming coastal and marine tourism in, in, in this global agenda. Uh, trying to, again, to highlight the need to um, move towards a sustainability, regeneration, and resilience. This special report was commissioned in face of the global pandemic that we were just uh, discussing. As you can see on screen, uh, a, a sort of uh, analysis that, that draws from this report highlights how tourism has a direct and indirect contribution to different uh, SDGs uh, uh, in a more uh, 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 clear, clear way. So tourism is without any doubt, an earth opportunity to interact with different commitments and different targets of different uh, uh, um, sectors. Um, so tourism must be uh, 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 an element to advance on, obviously, the protection of the planet while we produce sustainably uh, uh, from it, and it contributes to prosperity. Just to give you a sort of, of a sort of example, in that sense, uh, one of the main questions of this report was, well, wh what is really the value of of of, of, of tourism? I'm talking about obviously ocean-based uh, industries uh, among many other things. What, 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 what is really, what is the, the leverage of tourism on, on, on the agenda? And as you can see your screen, it, it really is 50% of uh, the, 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 the export value of all the ocean-based uh, industries. So it has a very strong 
uh, an important role that without any doubt is going to grow throughout time. On screen, you can see some of the, of the five foundational priorities that this report highlights uh, almost at the end of it. And I truly invite you all to, to take a look at it. It's, it. It is a very compelling report that not only has this sort of uh, uh, ideas and case studies and obviously priorities, but it, it, it even includes a set of indicators to monitor and track progress towards the, the, the the, 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 the principles of sustainable tourism, uh, 32 indicators, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the five foundational priorities relates to, well, uh, obviously the, the importance of uh, focusing tourism and on, on policies, plans, uh, developing and, 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 and working on attracting visitors uh, to, to, to different uh, 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 destinations. Um, one that it's uh, a discussion that we had early this morning in, the, in a global uh, uh, workshop is the importance of, uh, let's say, collecting, integrating, and maintaining data on sustainability indicators, and particularly data and information related to the, the condition of the ecosystems, coastal marine, oceanic, obviously terrestrial, and tourism and how to integrate them to generate better practices in policies and even spatial, spatial planning. Uh, in some cases, uh, as it, it could happen, in, and, and, and this is a, a sort of case study from Mexico, uh, we promote sustainable tourism in, in one area where uh, there is already established a different um, industry like fisheries or other and not necessarily uh, embedded in a, in, a, in, a, in a harmonious way and we create conflicts. So uh, the importance of uh, interrelating data among uh, uh, tourism and ecosystems in a, in a sort of uh, a, a spatial planning is fundamental and, and this is uh, 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 Related and this is talked, uh, this is showcased in, in, in the report. Finally, at least in, in Mexico, uh, we're discussing heavily um, how to uh, highlight the contribution of tourism because it's a very complex uh, sector into uh, the, the GDP. But more than that, how can we include uh, sustainable tourism as an element for our account? accounting system of the country. So that's related to budgets and the Ministry of Treasury and, and some other things. Um, the third star from this constellation that I wanted just to highlight, and, and I take advantage of this uh, 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 figure on screen that was presented uh, by an NGO or a uh, sort of uh, uh, initiative, Business for Nature, right? But it's, it's really nice because it's one of the best figures that I found to explain more or less what uh, the, 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 the Convention on Biological Diversity is discussing right now is the new targets. So at the end of this year, on, on, on December at Montreal, basically the planet is going to define the new targets uh, related to biological diversity for 2030. Um, and, and they're grouped in three uh, main areas. Uh, targets related to uh, reducing threats to, to, to biodiversity, targets related to the implementation of mainstreaming, that means how do we include, uh, how do we uh, uh, yeah, uh, cross-cut um, biodiversity into the different uh, productive sectors, and obviously uh, targets related to sustainable use and benefit sharing, a uh, very complex uh, component of, of the targets. Uh, towards uh, uh, a, a concrete mission um, uh, that it's, it's, almost, it's almost there and uh, to a 2050 vision. And within this, um, the target that I talked about on the 30 by 30, it's of relevance, but also targets related to tourism that are not necessarily very uh, 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 recognized. Uh, in fact, uh, tourism is almost always at the end of the discussions uh, and not central to, to, to or as a solution for uh, the conservation of biodiversity. So in that sense, 
Uh, target 14 that you can see on screen talks about mainstreaming. And one of the sectors discussed is obviously the tourism sector. So this opens an opportunity for tourism to be seen not only as a, a sort, sort of beneficiary from nature, but as a contributor to uh, the protection, sustainable use and prosperity um, of the planet uh, uh, and the, the completion of, of different targets and, and goals. In that sense, target three of, of conservation, the 30 by 30, and I will try to uh, uh, wrap up with, with this. As I said before, it contributes or reflects the relevance of protected areas, but also this new concept of OECMs. And OECMs, for those who do not know, is everything else that contributes de facto no, on effective conservation, but it's not a protected area. So you have some uh, uh, areas on the landscape that contributes immediately to conservation. They have done it probably for centuries or decades in an effective way, but they're not recognized as a protected area, but they are conserving biodiversity. Those areas are what we are discussing and trying to identify, recognize, and then report as OECMs. This is in a very simple um, try, uh, uh, manner of, 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 of describing and explaining OECMs. But in, in that sense, what is the role outside protected areas that tourism, tourism is already doing and protecting sites that could be recognized as OECMs and then obviously contribute to this global target of protecting 30% of the planet by 2030. So tourism must play a different role in the following years. And it, ha it has to lead on the discussions on biodiversity, protection, and prosperity. So going back to this sort of drawing constellation and start. So I just gave you three different, very different elements that are dis being discussed and worked upon. On one hand, WCPA, as just an example, is not the only one, as one example of a network of experts related to protected and conserved areas that contribute with the best knowledge possible on tourism um, globally. On the other hand, a global agenda led by governments mainly trying to move uh, big, complicated policies, agendas related to oceans and uh, marine and coastal tourism uh, in 17 countries. That will obviously affect many others. And finally, a star on multilateral affair under the UN umbrella related to the new targets on biological diversity. And on the three stars, tourism is reflected. So there is already a constellation, constellation drawing there. So I invite you to always look upon the night sky, look at those different stars and develop the capacity to link them and come out with good, hopefully effective initiatives for the conservation of biodiversity. So Ryan, uh, on my behalf, that is, one of the main messages that I wanted to come um, uh, with you today and share uh, some of the ideas and the global agendas and discussions that are happening uh, uh, and, and bring it all the way uh, to Colorado and, 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 and the, virtual, the virtual community. So back to you. Thank you, Andrew. And, and um, I think a lot of the, what you talked about today uh, highlights some of these big long-term initiatives that are ongoing and there's going to be things that are happening over years and decades and that's going to be really good but we also walk away with a message that maybe we could all just take a pause tonight after the sun's gone down after we've had dinner walk outside with our loved ones and look upon the night sky and see what inspiration we might find so i really i really appreciate that uh, that analogy and calling that out for us um, we have a few minutes here for a few questions, um, and um, I'm going to start off with one question that I have for you, and then we have a question um, that somebody submitted into the Whova app that we've been able to extract, and I'll, I'll pass that on to you. Um, 
uh, you know, as I think about what you were talking about with uh, with the World Commission on Protected Areas, I actually found myself reflecting back on my own career and and starting to get really involved with the WCPA back in in Durban, South Africa, during the World Parks Congress. And WCPA has played an in, incredibly important role in my career uh, of keep getting me connected with people all around the world. In fact, I think our work uh, began to some degree because of uh, maybe it was in the Australia World Parks Congress where we did some work together. Um, and I know you mentioned a little bit about the membership and you mentioned specifically about the Tapas group, which is very related to this particular conference that's focused on, on tourism and protected area. However, I just wondered um, in this particular conference, we have a lot of the participants are students or young professionals looking to engage and in, in, in figuring out their next steps and how to get engaged into this big sphere of, of tourism and conservation. And so I wondered if you had any other additional recommendations or suggestions that you might have for young people attending this conference on how to get more involved about uh, with the World Commission on, on Protected Areas. So yes, of course, uh, Ryan, I, 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 I mentioned it very briefly, but anyone can be a member of the WCPA if they want to uh, uh, volunteer work to it. Um, uh, I can send uh, I, I send you an email, then you can forward to all the participants of the conference how to register and let's say become a member of, of WCPA, and it's very important. Something that I reflected and, and learned through, through throughout time, and, and and you are a witness of this, is as any other initiative, it really depends on you how you get involved. You can be an spectator just receiving an email from time to time with some, let's say, news or, or, or things happening around there, or you, be, or you can be an active actor on it. And what WCPA is, is that. It gives the opportunity for those who want to be active and, 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 and really promote and work and uh, draw their sleeves up and, and wants to get their, their hands dirty, it, it is for that. Also, no. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send you not only the link to to the membership, but also our focal point related to young professionals that want to get involved with WCPA, and it's open for it. And there's, believe me, there's plenty of work to do. Yeah. Um, so so and, and as you said, it is a network of, of experts. So it's great to hear stories from from different countries and not only from our own backyard and reality. And the, 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 the amount of knowledge, lessons learned, uh, it's just, it is just amazing. It's just amazing to have the opportunity to talk with somebody from uh, Tunisia or Algiers and, and, and then relate with, with your own experience and how you incorporate those lessons learned and their policies into you. And, and it, it is just a, a thing. It, it is a huge thing. Then. So without any doubt, I will send information. So hopefully many of the participants can join uh, WCPA. Perfect. That sounds great. And yeah, I love I love that, uh, you know, inviting people to, to get involved and not just kind of passively, uh, you know, see what conservation is doing. And I've always found that the World Commission on Protected Areas, like you said, is just that it's it's a place where you can lean in. And um, I mean, I would say for 20 plus years, the, the commission has been very good about recognizing the important contribution of, of young professionals and providing specific spaces for young professionals to get involved. Um, we do have a couple of other questions uh, that have popped up, but um, we are out of time. And so what we'll do is we'll try to get uh, some of those uh, questions answered for uh, those that have answered, asked them uh, through the Whova app. Um, I will also make sure that I post the information that you're going to forward me on to the Whova app as well, so people can have more information about uh, joining uh, the WCPA if that's what they, they so, so desire. Um, I wish you the best of luck, Andrew, in all the different endeavors. There's so much going on. There's a lot of exciting work, uh, whether it's uh, with WCPA's new strategy or the, 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 the meeting in Montreal at the end of this year, um, thinking about the role of, o, o, of OECMs uh, or OMEX in Spanish uh, as, they, as, we're, as we're thinking about the, the, the 30 by 30. So lots of work to be done. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busiest schedule to, to be with us, and we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And open for any other questions. It is a great honor to be here. And, uh, and thank you, you and Emily and all the team for all the hard work. Great. Thank you.